Hey everyone, Nigel and Luke here, and welcome to another edition of Crimes of the Week International. Before we get to today's video, we're excited to announce that our official Patreon page is now live. Patrons will receive exclusive extended editions of each one of our Crimes of the Week and Crimes of the Week International videos. So if you want even more crime news coverage, head over to patreon.com slash crimezone. Authorities in northern France say that three police officers are in custody this week after they fled the scene of a vehicle collision caused by playing with a taser. The bizarre incident took place on August 28th after six officers had finished their shifts and were traveling together in a police vehicle towards the city of Robay, near the French border with Belgium. The colleagues were supposedly in good spirits and by their own admission were acting like idiots. However, one of them decided to take things a bit too far. Things got out of hand when a female officer sitting in the passenger seat fired her taser in the direction of the driver. After being struck, the driver lost control of the vehicle, causing him to hit a parked car. Though thankfully there were no injuries as a result of the collision, the officers decided to flee the scene of the accident rather than wait around and try to explain what had happened. Unfortunately for them, they were spotted by a nearby resident who reported the crash. Three of the six people involved in the bizarre incident have now been arrested and charged. Though none of them have been identified by name, we know that two of the officers have been charged with hit-and-run and aiding and abetting a hit-and-run. The female officer who fired the taser has been charged with intentional violence with a weapon and endangering the lives of others. In an attempt to explain the woman's actions, her lawyer said that she was just trying to give the driver a light taser, though we're not exactly sure what that's supposed to mean. The three police officers are due to appear in court on February 3rd. Officials in the South Korean port city of Busan say that they have made the largest ever drug bust in the nation's history. Following the arrest of a suspect who was trying to smuggle more than 400 kilograms of methamphetamine into the country. The announcement was made on September 1st by representatives of the Busan District Prosecutor's Office. The officials said that a 34-year-old man had been arrested and charged with the crime after he was caught trying to bring in 404.23 kilograms, or roughly 891 pounds of the illegal drug, from Mexico. In order to put the amount in perspective, authorities said that it was enough to give one dose to 13.5 million people at the same time. The drugs have an estimated local street value of 1.3 trillion won, or roughly 1.12 billion dollars US. Friends and family are mourning the tragic loss of a 22-year-old woman this week after she was killed by her boyfriend in an alleged murder-suicide. According to reports, at approximately 1 p.m. on August 27th, Northamptonshire police went to a residence on Slate Drive in the town of Kettering after receiving a call about concerns for the welfare of Maddie Durdand Hollenby. Sadly, when they searched the house, they found Maddie's lifeless body along with the body of her boyfriend, 41-year-old Benjamin Green. Authorities allege the Green stabbed the 22-year-old to death before taking his own life with the same weapon. At the time of this recording, it's unclear what motivated the brutal crime, as police say that they had so far found no evidence of domestic abuse or trouble within the relationship. However, they are asking members of the public to come forward with any relevant information that they might have. Maddie reportedly met Green at the water management company where they both worked. It is said that Green is the father of three young children. Family and friends remember Maddie as a kind, caring, and creative woman whose talents helped her start a successful career in marketing. According to them, her life was tragically cut short just as her professional ambitions were really starting to take off. Friends, family, and colleagues of a British journalist are paying tribute to his memory this week after he was murdered during an armed robbery in Ghana several days ago. According to reports, 31-year-old Syed Talay Ahmed had left his home in Hartlepool, England to film a documentary in the African nation for Muslim television Ahmadiyya International. He had spent 13 days filming in the country when the attack that took his life occurred. The terrifying incident unfolded at approximately 7 p.m. on August 23rd, near the town of Tomoli, when Syed's car was ambushed by a group of armed men. 
The robbers opened fire on the vehicle, striking him and a Ghanaian colleague. After stealing some of their possessions, the armed men left the two victims for dead. Syed was rushed to a local hospital, but sadly succumbed to his injuries a short time later. Reports do not mention what happened to his colleague. Ghanaian authorities say that two of the suspects believed to have been involved in the robbery are now dead following a shootout with police a few days later. At least four others have also been taken into custody. Syed left behind a wife and two children in England. Authorities in the Colombian city of Bucaramanga had an unlikely bit of help apprehending an alleged thief this week when a section of garden fencing ended up capturing the suspect for them. The bizarre incident took place recently in the city's Kennedy neighborhood as police chased the unarmed suspect after he committed a robbery in the area. At some point during the pursuit, the man attempted to jump over a piece of metal fencing to hide in the garden of a house, which turned out to be a big mistake. Not only did the unlucky thief get his leg trapped in the fencing, he landed in such a way that the jump ended up turning him on his head. Unable to free himself, the man hung upside down, allowing authorities to quickly catch up. It turned out that the man was so stuck that the fire department actually had to be called, and for a while it appeared as though they might have to cut the fencing to actually get him out. However, they eventually managed to free him from the fence's metal rods, leaving the alleged thief with only a minor foot injury. After a brief trip to the hospital, the man was promptly arrested. Authorities in the Japanese city of Sapporo say that a 41-year-old man is facing charges this week after he allegedly carried out a rather absurd robbery attempt at a local convenience store. According to reports, the incident took place at approximately 3.30 p.m. on August 21st at a store in the city's Kyoto Ward. That's when Tomoharu Nakamura entered the business armed with a small disposable cigarette lighter and began attempting to threaten the manager with it allegedly shouting, Out with the money, or I'll light you up. Not remotely intimidated by Nakamura or his lighter, the manager went into the back room of the convenience store and called police. At the same time, the shop's numerous customers took their opportunity to leave, apparently deciding that they didn't need to see how this was going to play out. When police arrived at the scene, Nakamura likewise threatened them with his lighter. However, they were also not intimidated, and were quickly able to make an arrest. Once in custody, Nakamura admitted to trying to rob the business and was charged with offenses related to the robbery as well as assaulting a police officer and obstructing police business. Japanese commenters appeared to be equally baffled and amused after reading reports about the bizarre robbery, with some joking that the manager should have simply blown out the lighter's flame when Nakamura threatened him. Others wondered whether he might have been a seasoned bank robber who simply wanted to challenge himself. Either way, according to reports, Nakamura could be looking at some serious jail time for the strange crime. Authorities in Queensland, Australia say that they have successfully identified a body found on the rural property this week as that of the missing 31-year-old mother, Renee Lattimore. Renee was reported missing on August 18th, but had last been seen alive several days earlier on August 9th. Police were also able to uncover CCTV video of the 31-year-old shopping at a supermarket in the town of Serena on August 7th. It is believed that this is the last known footage captured of her. Renee's body was found on a rural property in the town of Kumala on August 29th during a police search. Her death is being treated as a suspected homicide, but authorities have not yet announced her cause of death or whether they have any persons of interest in the case. Police are asking members of the public to come forward with any relevant CCTV, dash cam footage, or any other relevant information they might have about the investigation. They're particularly interested in anyone who can share information about the movement of people and vehicles in the Kumala and Ilbilbi areas between the dates of August 8th and 11th. Officials in Arasatuba, Brazil, say that the city is reeling this week after authorities continue to deal with the fallout from a terrifyingly large and complex bank robbery. According to reports, the incident began in the early hours of August 30th, when robbers began coordinated attacks on three different banks in the city. At least one of the banks was accessed through an underground vault, 
and a second was also successfully broken into, while a third was severely damaged. Investigators say that between 15 and 20 people were involved in the massive robbery, which had been carefully planned. The criminals used burning cars to strategically block access to different streets, dropped at least 40 remotely triggered explosive devices in 20 locations around the city, and attacked the local military police station to overwhelm authorities in order to neutralize their response. The robbers even reportedly employed aerial drones in the heist to keep tabs on the crime from the sky. Though the attack was no doubt brilliantly coordinated, it was also terrifying and shockingly violent for residents of the city. At least three people were killed during the robbery, including one of the suspects, and several other people were shot or sustained serious injuries. A cyclist reportedly had to have both of his feet amputated after unwittingly triggering one of the explosive devices while riding by. The robbers were described by witnesses as aggressive and had no problems using violence to intimidate their victims. One witness said that if anyone was caught watching from a window, the criminals would shoot in their direction. However, by far the most terrifying part of the robbery involved the thieves' escape. Hostages were either tied or forced to hold on for dear life to the hoods and roofs of the robbers' cars, acting as human shields while they drove out of the city. While thankfully it appears that all of these hostages survived, their terrifying ordeal lasted for nearly two hours, and at least 11 of them were released in a rural area where they were forced to walk back, which took several hours more. At the current time, it is unclear how much money the criminals made off with. The situation on the ground still appears to be chaotic, and police are advising residents to stay inside while they attempt to deal with the remaining explosives scattered around the city. Two of the suspects have since been arrested, but all the others are still believed to be on the run. That brings us to the end of this edition of Crimes of the Week International. If you're a fan of the new series, don't forget to tell us in the comment section below. While you're there, make sure to subscribe to Crime Zone for more true crime content like this, making sure to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with our latest videos. Thank you for watching.